Thanks again for joining us. I'm Tony Papa from Pro Media Gear. It's another Wednesday tutorial from Pro Media Gear. And uh, today and throughout the month, we're going to be discussing flash brackets. In our case, it's the Boomerang Flash Bracket Series and a Paparazzi Bracket. I'm going to briefly go through the lineup of what we have, what they offer, and how to kind of basically use them. And then stay tuned in the next few weeks as we discuss opportunities for modifiers and other accessories that go onto the flash brackets to just enhance your photo experience and fit your shooting style. Um, so to start out, we've got the Boomerang Flash Bracket. It's our flagship bracket that uh, kind of established Pro Media Gear way back in 2009. Um, what we have first is the BBX. The BBX is a Boomerang Bracket X for Universal, and it's a, a real elegant bracket we have here, made out of 6061 aircraft grade aluminum. It's a multi-piece bracket that's all built around an Arca Swiss bracket plate called the PBX3. You may also purchase it with a custom plate. You can find out more information on our website. But for today, I'm just going to discuss how it's an Arca bracket plate. And it's a modular technology that we incorporate here with our flash arm. Box into a detent pin and releases to hold that flash up sturdy. Um, I'll go through it in more detail of how it breaks down and what components go with it. But for now, this is the BBX flash bracket. Locking detent pin. It's got enough room to put a transmitter on there. Get away or the cable. Mount your flash above the lens, always keeping it above, helping reduce or eliminate red eye and also helping or eliminating um, awkward shadows and side shadows. The built-in kickstand in there too. So when you set it on a table, it doesn't tip over. The next one in line is we have the BBXL. So it's very similar as you can see to the boomerang flash bracket. However, it's on the left side of the camera. We always get the question like, that's the one I need, it's on the left. Um, might be what you think you're used to, however, most of us shoot right elbow up nowadays. So the BBXL actually would flop the flash down. What this is actually used for is for the customer that maybe has a um, bad shoulder or has had surgery or just prefers the more stable position of putting their elbow into their stomach, you would just be able to shoot like this and always keep that flash above the lens. This is the BBXL. It's very similar to the BBX. And I'll speak about it in more detail in a minute. Our other flagship boomerang bracket is the BBG V2. Boomerang bracket grip version 2. Now on this version, it's very similar. The boomerang shape will rotate up and down, keeping that flash above the lens. It's got the kickstand built in. It's a little bit larger kickstand for a larger body. And this boomerang is going to be geared toward anybody with a gripped-based camera, so you can get access to the trigger and the uh, shutter dial down here, or the, the taller, like, one-piece body cameras, like the D5 or the Canon 1DX Mark II. So that type of camera, um, it's only going to fit that type of camera because of where the um, rotation point is here. It's a little bit raised up comparatively to the uh, boomerang X, the BB, BBX. And the BBX is a hybrid where we allow you to adjust it. I'll get into that. But in general, this is the Boomerang BBG V2. It's going to have a nice locking detent and allow me easy access to the controls that are found on the, on the battery. Lastly, in our flash bracket um, roundup for today, the Paparazzi bracket, BP1. Now this is a unique little L piece right here with a little opportunity to move this around wherever you want. So on this one, Still works around the PBX3 or custom bracket plate by Pro Media Gear. And on these holes down here, I have the ability to line this up and mount it with a couple bolts that we provide you with, either on the left side or right side of the camera. I also have an opportunity to move it if I wanted to toward the back or, it's kind of an awkward camera angle, on the back like this. Now, Honestly, I don't know why you'd put a flash back there, but think of it this way. Put it back on normal. We provide you with this square little plate, mounting plate. It's got a couple holes in it. You're able to mount it with the other bolts that we provide you with anywhere along this plate. Forwards, backwards, left side, right side, front and back. Using your imagination, you could actually put a flash here, which I'll do in a second, to allow it to be on the right side, real tight form factor by the lens, what that's going to do is allow me that nice, small, paparazzi-esque um, flash feeling where I'm a nice compact package. I'm able to get in, the, you know, get in the grind down there in the mosh pit, get my elbows going, and really take the photos I need without having an obtrusive bracket. Um, I'm also able to, if you think about it, put this backwards 
mount it back this way, and then maybe I put a monitor on it. Maybe that fits my shooting style a little better. I need a, I need a little video preview screen, or maybe it's a, um, a microphone. Or you can even put it forwards. Maybe I put the flash way over here. Totally optional, just depends on how it gets in the way of your grip or not. Um, the sky's the limit on that, but this is a very compact bracket, the BP-1. So we'll get into that in a minute. First, let's go ahead, uh, feel free to ask any questions on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and any of the other media platforms that we're on right now. And I'll answer them as we go. But what I'm going to do is just break down the features of the Boomerang BBX right now. And I'll go through all of them and then ask any questions and I'll answer them as fast as I can. So what the BBX does right here, traditionally it's in a black arm shaped like a boomerang. We have the red arm available as well as yellow, titanium silver, blue, and a purple color. The color options are a few dollars more and can be found on our website at promediagear.com. The boomerang, if you throw it, it's not coming back. But it's got this boomerang shape that allows it to go around the lens. And then when you're pulling on this lever here, it's lifting up on this pin. The idea would be is keep your right hand always on the, on the uh, camera in the shooting position. Grab this and then roll your hand down. When you release the pin, it goes back into another locking pin and into another detent on this titanium alloy ring that we have here. It's a very stable connection and just locks it in. What you're going to do first is you're going to mount the plate onto your camera body. The whole unit comes off cleanly and is held on by these two little uh, BP or BBX pins. The unit itself, when you first get it, it's going to be folded up compactly like this. I'll take the flash off here and break it down for you. So I've got this nice little tool, as I like to call it. Rather than sitting as a flash bracket in my closet and being a little bit cumbersome and large, the BBX is a nice compact design that I can take with me, use it when I need it, maybe it's not even for the whole gig, but then be able to put it back in my bag when I'm done and always have it when I need it. So we're able to keep that BBX plate on our camera body, it's ARCA compatible, and then this, just in this configuration, is going to allow you to shoot things such as family, friends, maybe another event, another shooting style that you might like. Uh, it's going to be a little bit smaller form factor. So the BBX pins in most cameras are going to still be able to open the door here, that's why I don't have it on there, just to show you that it doesn't block it, and uh, that's just going to be on the camera body. The boomerang itself, you're just going to open it up, tighten down the lever knob here. It's that simple. We also provide you with a cold shoe to mount right on top. There's also a quarter 20 screw that comes on the top there, and you do have the option to put on a cable if necessary. I'm going to walk you through that step. Once the unit's open, on our plates, we have two hardened steel pins here that fit into um, little holes that are built into the plate. So once that goes down flat, you're just going to tighten the knob until it's snug, and it's going to close an eyelet right on top of that um, bracket. We also built in a kickstand, so when you're laying it on a table, you can put it out and put it in when you're not using it. If you don't put it in, the camera, depending on the lens, is going to have an opportunity to do this. So we thought about that and put on this little kickstand. On the top here, you can see that there's enough distance for the transmitter. This bracket's only one pound. It looks a little bit cumbersome, but it's not. At one pound, it's great. It's moved up in front, um, allowing me to put my flash on, putting a cable or transmitter back here, and we've tested it with many transmitters on the market. Even these larger guys, I mean, it seems like every year the transmitters do more and more stuff, but they get bigger and bigger. It's not going to get in the way with the boomerang. So as you can see here, I slide on my Canon transmitter in this case, and I still have room. It's going to take the Pro Photo, Ellen Chrome, Godox, Nikon, whatever camera you have, it's going to fit. Um, then on top here, you see I've mounted the cold shoe. Because I'm using a wireless transceiver, I'm able to go ahead and take the flash that works with that and just put it right on top. In my case, I grabbed the wrong flash. But, all right, put it on there, lock it down. By having this gap there, it's going to transmit to this and still allow me to transmit to other lights in the room. Still able to rotate up. I'm still even able to bounce my flash around if necessary. The, uh, the idea of getting the light above the lens is just going to really help with those shadows. Once this is over today, I'll go back on the Facebook post and I'll post a few photos we've taken without it. Because people always say, like traditionally, well what if I had the flash on the camera and I just tilted my camera? I would bounce it anyway. The shape of the light is different and that when you're able to get that flash up, even if it's still bounced, 
it's noticeably a different um, shadow position and way more easily pleased, pleasing to the eye and you will notice a difference. Um, the side shadows as well, you'll notice how it'll cast a big shadow along a wall from your subject standing on the side, but if it's on top, the shadows will be dispersed down. Um, like I said, we'll post those photos. It's, it's noticeable and it makes your pictures really stand out. The BBX being universal does have an opportunity to be expanded to fit battery grips as well as the larger body cameras as well if desired. So the universal BBX is a great opportunity if you have various cameras. We put an Allen key built in here, right here on a magnet. It comes right off, as you can see right there. You would simply loosen this small NATO rail that's holding the, the arm portion. We'll loosen it just a little bit. And now I'm able to slide that up. As you can see though, sliding it up on this shorter body camera, it's, it's definitely like in the lens, and I wouldn't want to do that. However, if I had the grip here, everything would be shifted. I'd be able to get a similar shooting position that the BBG is in right now. Let me lock that back. By pretending this is a grip-based camera, now everything would still work. I have easy access to shooting in the standard position. However, I even could go down like this. The mechanism will get a little bit in your hands to see your wear, but you do have full access to where the battery would be for the trigger controls. If I didn't have a transmitter here, we get that question, you would just want to use the 12-inch coiled cable. Uh, the cable would go on here and get screwed right onto the boomerang. You'd have a little bit of a cable there, then as it goes up, the cable would become more taunt. Both opportunities work great. Again, this is the boomerang BBX flash bracket. BBXL, this is going to be, like we discussed, a very similar bracket to the boomerang, connecting in the very similar fashion onto the bottom of the bracket. Um, the only difference is how it it's going to allow me to have my elbow down, put my, my camera on top. You do have an opportunity, if it gets the wheels spinning, you could do two brackets on one. I could easily put this bracket on the other side here and rock a double boomerang. Now after your mind just explodes and you think, that's got to be hot, like cumbersome and a little bit heavy, I'll be honest with you, it's a little bit cumbersome and heavy. However, the light output is amazing. You could easily set one here and one here do clamshell lighting. We've seen um, people use it on runway shows in New York. We also see a handful of people that are using it that are really thinking outside the box and using it in places where they can't get a permit to put a light stand down. You might think that's kind of crazy, but if you're in a uh, New York subway, for instance, or some kind of like street photography, it's like some cities require you to have permits. And uh, the way around that is carrying your gear. So you can have an assistant, which is awesome. Or you can go ahead and just put two lights up. We have accessories that will even allow you to use soft boxes on these. The bracket's going to be able to hold it, and you're going to be able to get some amazing photography without having to jump through all the hoops. For more information on those, check out the double boomerang flash bracket that can be found on ProMediaGear.com. We have a lot of examples of that on our site. All right, next we'll briefly discuss the BBG. The grip version goes on slightly different, but works in the same fashion. So it's going to work on the same bracket plate, the PBX3, or many of our custom brackets. And it goes on, rather than on the dial, on those uh, prongs that stick out, you notice here there's nothing on. So it actually goes right into the hardened steel pins, go right into the plate, and it screws right into the plate. So what we've done here is the whole unit is kind of set up on a little rail. So I can loosen this. Set it up like this. I'll show you how you get it right out of your bag, set it up together. That way you can see the whole process. It's pretty easy. It's like a, an erector set for big kids. So when you get the unit, it's going to be broken down quite simply into this shape here. Traditionally with the black arm. Same color is available. It's the same arm. So what we did is just change kind of the bottom mechanism here. So we've got it in black standard, silver, yellow, red, blue, and fuchsia or like a purple magenta. Still comes with the cold shoe opportunity. What you're going to want to do is first put that plate on your camera, loosen up the arm. It's just like a NATO clamp we put in here. Slide it in, perpendicular, tighten it down. This lever is spring-loaded. You would pull it out and can slide it around and get it in the position you want. Sometimes I'll get a phone call like, oh, it's stuck and it's bouncing on my table. Just go ahead and pull that out and then turn it sideways. 
Put the kickstand out, get it out of your way. You can see the hardened steel rods here and the thread. I'm just going to line that up, put it in, tighten it down a few times. As you can see, it's pretty easy to do. The thumb dial there just sucks it right on in. Once it's snug, you're ready to go. So you do have an opportunity on the BBG, slide it in and out to fit various uh, lens diameters. And the goal would be to try to get it as close to center of the lens as possible to get that flash the best opportunity to be even. So once you're satisfied with the setup, go ahead and kick that kickstand out. Go ahead and take my flash, pop it on here like this, tighten it down. It does have the same size on the back side, so I am able to go ahead and put a plate. Still have a gap there. It's going to be able to flip over. Now I could shoot traditionally, no problem at all. But the benefit of the BBG is the grip um, arc right here allows my hand access to get underneath. So by getting underneath, now I have full control of the dial and the trigger. Give you a better look at that. So the shape is where it's at because now I'm able to shoot and then come right here unblocked. There's nothing in my hand. I have full access to all the controls. Still lightweight, just around a pound. Super rigid out of the 6061 aircraft grade aluminum. A great opportunity to keep that flash in the right orientation. Like I said, I can still bounce. And if I want, I can tether with a cable. We do incorporate a magnet key. It's kind of hard to show right here. So you always have it with you. The 532 Allen keys you use to tighten down um, just the core screw here. And that's really it that you would need it for. It just allows you that access point to that. So that's the boomerang flash bracket setup. The BBX, the BBXL, the BBG V2. The last thing we wanted to show you today was that paparazzi, the BP1. What I've already gone ahead and done is I've got the uh, A7R3, nice small form factor camera here. Went ahead and just put the universal PBX3 bracket plate right on the bottom. I still have access to get to the battery. I'm going to take the BP1 piece, the L, put it on right there. And we provide you with two bolts. It'll get put right in here and tightened down. It's going to be about 30 seconds. I'm going to take time to put these in just so I can show you the whole setup. Tom, while I'm doing this, are there any questions coming in or anything? Yeah, so somebody mentioned that they use the boomerang desk antenna photo. Hmm. That they, yeah, definitely cut down on the harassment when they're using light stands. Oh, excellent. Thanks, Des, for yeah. verifying that. Yeah, we've heard a lot of shooters in the New York region, such as yourself, and different park situations where yeah, you don't get in trouble nearly as often. You might get questioned. Well, you shouldn't get You don't need a permit, yeah. Because you don't need, yeah. They'll ask no. you what you're doing, because it looks like a big deal, which you are. Somebody but mentioned, like, uh, yeah. Uh, also, like, if that some some people do use it for video. They said, like, oh. use it with video. So, yeah, uh, it definitely allows you to put a microphone or a light if you wanted to. It's just not the original intent, because it's, I mean, I don't know you, but I don't put the, the lit, well, excuse me. I don't put a video light in vertical mode. However, it does give you ex access to another quarter 20 and an opportunity to put something out there, so... I mean, if you have it, you can use it for that purpose. Definitely. Exactly. It's another part Exactly. It's just a, and also, it just a tool. Go and ahead. also, like, the, the, we have even multiple quarter 20s on, on, the, on mm -hmm. the arms, so you can attach other things. If you like. Yeah, you might have an additional pocket wizard or a monitor or something. You can kind of think creatively on how any of these little uh, accessory ports would work for you. Um, many of the accessory ports are thought out by us. of just like there's an opportunity for somebody to think about it. We've got room. We're going to go ahead and put it on there. Um, a quick one to show you would just be something like this. Yeah. Like there was meat and potatoes here, we could do something with it. Um, the other thing is this is all CNC machined in the United States in our shop in uh, Tenley Park, Illinois. We have to take the raw material and bolt it down to a table. So we physically choose to bolt it with the quarter 20 thread because it's a common thread in our industry. We mount it to the table and then mill the piece. So it does become a dual purpose um, pin for us. All right, well, in the few minutes we were taking time to discuss that, I went ahead and put the BP1 forwards for me and now by bolting it into the cheese plate that it comes with I've got an opportunity to put anything I want with a quarter 20 into there so what I'm going to do next is take our CS2 cold shoe and mount it in the anti-rotation channel that's provided there 
put that in. There it is. So now I can uh, slide this forward backwards. And probably what I mentioned too that it has anti rotation. So yeah, I just mentioned that. Oh, you did. Already did. <laughs> Listen to the video, Tom. Listen to the video. But there, there is a channel in here that we build the anti rotation into, and it's into the bottom of the CS2 as well. There's like a little, a little cut. So now, because you can use aftermarket ones, it's highly recommended to use ours because it's going to go in there, and as you can see, it's not twisting because it's in that channel. Then I'm taking a flash here. Bear with me, it's a generic flash, but I'm just showing you to get the point across. But you put your flash into the bracket. I still have access to get my hand around it. And I have a much smaller form factor to, to either get my elbows into that mosh pit, as I said earlier, just kind of like, just have a better form factor. Maybe I'm shooting a concert where I just don't have the opportunity to have a bracket. And they're like, ooh, it looks it looks really pro. Like, it looks so big. Like, I don't, I don't want you to be intrusive with my clients. Um, having their experience. So what can you do to be smaller? Now I've got an opportunity to put my flash on a much smaller form factor. It's not blocking my hand at all on this side. I'm able to get in there, bounce it wherever I want, maybe put a mag mod on top of there, whatever I want. But it's a much smaller, you can see the difference, form factor of what you're getting into. Um, I still have the opportunity to easily put a transmitter up here. Maybe it's a, a microphone and my uh, unit will automatically talk to this. Um, you can have other lights in the room if you have a transmitter up here as well for, for a nice little fill flash. It's kind of up to you. Um, this is just one good opportunity to put it on there and it works well. If I did, I could put it on the left hand side. In my opinion, it gets in the way of my hand. Some people love it on the left. Um, the other way I've used it frequently is by putting it to the back side here. I'm able to mount like a small um, ball head and you can mount that back here and put a monitor on it or anything you want, like my even my controller for my uh, uh, wireless lav or anything you want and just kind of have it off to the back but it works good for a monitor in the back just because it's easier to get at especially on this camera has an articulating screen i have a 7d mark ii still as well as a 7d mark one I, I use sometimes not as often now with the 4k stuff transmissioning up ugh, coming up but back in the day i would and then i wouldn't be able to have this articulating screen so i needed the monitor when it was awesome when we had this product because i could tilt it down and just get to everything i need um that's about it you guys can see how that kind of Sits so in my hand. Like, thank you for your time today. I can answer any final questions before we go. Again, all this can be found at promediagear.com or one of our local dealers near you. And if a dealer is not carrying Pro Media Gear, you're excited about it, please tell them to contact us. Um, and we'd love to talk to them. And any store is welcome to try our products out and get some samples in and uh, support local. So, again, I'm Tony from Pro Media Gear. Tom, do we have any final questions? Uh, there's really no questions, but maybe you want to add, like, uh, yeah. we had some uh, from before, from like a CRM. I've seen somebody oh, sure. that wanted to mount two flashes on a paparazzi. Okay. Because they're shooting sports, they want fast recycling times. Sure. So that's a really nice compact package if you're outdoors shooting, you know, trying to freeze motion or whatnot. Yeah, yeah you would have the opportunity to put one of the brackets here. You could put one of the brackets here. Even if the other bracket was chosen to put behind me, I could put another flash here. That way I have access for my hand to get there. And then the other flash, just to kind of hold one up, would be behind a little bit, but still providing you with great fill. You'd be able to have another flash right in this general area. And then, you know, maybe you're bouncing yeah, this flash. It. Yeah. Whatever just you want. Yeah. But then I'm able to get my hand there. And then this is still just sitting there. Um, if you go straight on with this, we have the question every once in a while too. Won't it create red eye? The short answer is possibly. Um, but it totally depends on your subject and also what kind of modifier you have on top of that flash. So it's not for everybody. This is definitely a, a um, I need it because situation. And if that's the case, this is a great opportunity to get that flash in a much more compact you know, feel. Now if I had my opportunities, I would probably gravitate more toward the full size boomerang. The boomerangs retail for around $300, $350 for the BBG. And then off the top of my head, it's like $100 for the paparazzi kit. $100 even for the whole kit. That kit always includes the bottom plate as well as the arm and the attachment. You would need a cold shoe on this one um, as it sits now. The boomerang comes complete with a plate and the cold shoe. Um, same thing with the BBXL. So we'll go ahead and post some links um, to get you guys tagged up on that. Thank you for watching today. We appreciate your time. Look forward to seeing you next Wednesday at another uh, informational setting. Thanks again. Have a good day.